Serious. What is your most terrifying we need to leave? Now random rush of fear you felt. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy the video. My car was stolen the very night I moved into my new house in a very good neighborhood. The neighbors had warned us that the neighborhood was being targeted at the time. They mentioned a woman around the corner that opened the door for knockers in the middle of the night and they attacked her and robbed her and almost killed her. We had reported the car stolen and did the police reports when it happened. Well, two nights later in the middle of the night I hear a knock on the door and they said open up. It's the police. Well, since I had heard the story about the other lady, I was suspicious and did not answer. I grabbed my kids and put them in my daughter's room because it had access to the roof from the window. I called the police to say that two men claiming to be police are pounding on my door. They said there was no police in the area and they're sending a car. Turns out, these same guys stole the car and came back for seconds. I did get my car back because they brought it with me, my GF, and her sister were walking around in a local park at around 9 p.m. Very safe town, absolutely zero worries. I saw another group doing the same. Three guys. First I didn't think anything of it, but I noticed that they kept walking faster. And that's when the feeling kicked in. I just told my girlfriend faster and apparently she was on the same page BC she didn't even question it. And we basically ran to her car. The scary part was the three dudes sped up as soon as we did, and stopped as soon as we started driving off. I was walking by a long stretch of road with no houses. There was a cemetery, a van with two guys and it stopped to ask me if I needed a ride. This was in the late 90s, so it's not like hitchhiking was legal. I'm all, no thanks, I'm nearly home. They wouldn't budge. They kept following me with the windows down, kept saying come on, just get in, dot. At some point they just stop, and they start getting out. I was just a teen, and they were clearly 20 something. I just took off running. I must have sprinted half a mile to get to an alley, and hid by the nearest building near the road. I waited about 15 minutes before moving on to make sure they had given up, so they wouldn't follow me home. I was at a party my freshman year of college and some seedy people were present. The night was getting very tense but no fights or anything happened. As the night went on it became very clear to me something was going to happen. I told my friend it was time to leave. No more than five minutes after we left someone was stabbed and the stabber was shot. Was at a rest stop in upstate New York near Troy around midnight. This was before cell phones and GPS and we stopped to use the payphone to find a hotel for the night. On the way back to the car, a couple of random guys approached us from behind asking for directions. I told my wife to get in the car when I noticed two other guys coming towards the car from the opposite direction. I hopped in the car and drove away before anything else happened. Might have just been me being overly cautious, but I swear I avoided a mugging or worse by the skin of my teeth. While in college, I was at a house party. I had gotten pretty drunk and was passed out on the couch. My buddies ran in to wake me and get me out of the house in a hurry. One of the other guys at the party got into a fight with someone, then ran to his car and got a shotgun from the trunk. He started running after the guy who had fought him. I didn't see any of this, but that was the fastest we ever left anywhere. I was at a national park on vacation. The layout was kinda like a crater with a room you can walk under almost all the way around. Had this major gut feeling of yeah not going down there. Later that day a lady was killed from kids throwing large rocks slash tree branches into the opening. I was at a house party and the people hosting were aggressively telling people to have a good time and go to the basement, like with a scary tone and a smile. Most of my friends left right away, and the one person who wanted to stay ended up getting mudged. I was walking in my old local park with my sister. We entered the it at about 3 p.m. and were hanging around until at about 9, 9.30 we saw three people all wearing somewhat similar outfits all the way on the other side of the park. I immediately noticed but don't think much of it. We walked for about two more minutes and I noticed one of them stopped and was staring at us. I immediately had a bad feeling and told my sister we should leave. She noticed and obliged. Later that night there was word of a stabbing in the park and the suspects were all the people we saw in the group of three. Years ago my boyfriend owned a truck tire repair company. He stopped by a customer's house unannounced one day to try to get a check, as they owed a lot of money. When he came out of the house he was pretty shaken up. He explained the man's numerous other brothers were there. Unusual? Everyone was very jittery but they cut him a check and then rushed him out. He had a scary feeling that day. Two days later the customer and his brothers were arrested for a murder that they had committed the night before we stopped by. Drinking at a bar with some mates, in Sydney, two young guys walked past, and I happened to make eye contact. He flashed a G-U-N at me, and nodded towards the door. I didn't make him ask twice. That would be when my mother convinced me it was a good idea to go see a house for sale in the middle of now here. Guy showed us the house and then led us to the door of the basement, insisting we absolutely had to see it. 
From the top of the stairs I could see a bed and what looked like a semi-furnished room. He insisted we go down first and in that moment I got this strong feeling of unease and just excused myself, turned on my heels and left, headed for the road. My mom said the guy got really upset, started to swear and sweat, and cut the visit short, so maybe my instinct were on point. I was camping with a friend in a backwoods camping area, not very many sites and they were all super spaced out. We had already been there one night, had the site fully set up. We had been hiking all day, the works. We drove into town to get some food, and when we were driving back to our secluded campsite we passed the man walking out of the only road to our site. We both locked eyes with him and I got a super creeped out feeling. He stared at us like he knew us and hated us, but we had never seen him in our lives. When we got to our tent we went inside and everything we had in there was tossed. Our bags were dumped out and our clothes were thrown everywhere. We quickly realized both our hunting knives were gone, along with a bunch of our clothes. We also realized it had to be that guy we saw. There were no other sites or hiking paths he could have been walking from besides ours. We jumped in the car and drove back towards where we had seen him. He was gone. We drove a bit further and found a common area where other campers were gathered. We sprinted down and asked have any of you seen this guy, and describe him. The people at the gathering just stared at us and didn't speak, giving us an even more creeped out feeling. It was at that point that I told my friend we need to leave this place right now. Walking back to our car we looked over the edge of a guardrail and saw all our stolen clothes in the woods. We gathered them up but didn't find either of our knives. Knowing this guy was still out there with those knives and that no one around us cared freaked us out so much. We packed the car up and ended our camping trip early. No way were we staying out in those woods one more night. It was about 2 a.m. in our apartment on the top floor, 3, and we woke up to the fire alarm going off. It was late and we just woke up and we've kind of been conditioned to feel like fire alarms aren't actually real. And then I saw smoke billowing on from under the door. It was freaking terrifying worrying about what was outside the door and running down the stairs while it burned our lungs and eyes and and we could barely see was an unforgettable terrifying experience. Definitely when my town got hit with the worst firestorm we've ever had in 2017. Thomas Fire. We knew there was a fire somewhere. Maybe another town? We weren't too worried. The power is beginning to go spotty, and the winds are howling outside. Then my roommate gets a call from a friend on the other side of town. My house is on fire. You guys need to pack a bag. After the call was over the power went out and stayed out. So we packed our bags, and I start to hear little plinks against the room. Almost like rain, but it isn't rain. It's just ash. Not 15 minutes had gone by, and I look outside. We live by a large hill only two blocks away, and it was burning. It got there so fast. I got back inside and tell my roommates we have to leave right away. This is when our neighbors started wigging out too. We had to then capture our three very scared and confused cats. It was so crazy to drive away and see only blackness ahead of you, but in your rear view mirror only flames. Our neighborhood slash home ended up being spared. However many of my friends who lived closer to the mountains were not so lucky. I was driving my friend and I back from a bar on the way to our Airbnb out in the middle of nowhere small town and sea. At some point early on, a car turns into the road behind us and it's dark so I don't think anything of it. But the longer we're on the road, the farther we get from civilization and it is very unusual for another car to be going out the way we are. So about half a mile from our Airbnb, I pull off to a side street and let the car pass. Then we wait five minutes, turn around to get back on a road, and lo and behold the car is just sitting there waiting for us. So we nope the frick out and now I'm flooring it back to town to the bar so we can get to safety. I do a rolling stop through a stop sign and the car finally turns its cop's lights on and pulls me over. Dude has the audacity to ask me why I ran a stop sign and I just go off on him about how freaking terrifying it is to be stalking two college girls who don't live in the state all the way back on the 25 minute drive home from the bar. Cop looks real apologetic and lets us off with a warning, saying that he thought we saw he was a cop and that people usually turn off onto side streets like we did when they're trying to avoid cops. I get it but like, goddamn that shit was fricked was once at summer camp and was walking to the beach. It's like a five minute walk from the cabins we were staying in, and the path to get there is made of sand and surrounded by trees. We were supposed to go in partners but mine dipped. Anyways I was walking for probably about two minutes and I hear leaves crunching in the trees beside me. So I look over and what I see is none other than a brown bear cub lugging a tree. I think that everyone knows that where there's a cub, there's a mama. This bear starts making bear noises. I just about shat my pants and bolted out of there. September 19, 1985 A huge earthquake hit Mexico City. Hundreds of buildings collapsed, and at least 10,000 people died. Every year, the earthquake is commemorated. In 2017, two hours after the commemoration, I was outside a classroom with some friends, 
waiting for our teacher. I saw one of my friends was uneasy, and she asked me to go to a small store outside the building with her. I could notice she didn't actually want to buy anything, she just wanted to get out of the building. We were just beginning to walk to the stairs when the earthquake sirens began to sound and the building began to move. The building we were at suffered little damage, just a couple of broken windows, but many other buildings in other parts of the city collapsed and more than 200 people died. Was on a second date with a guy who wanted to stop at his house to grab something, and invited me in. He was super hot, but I wasn't feeling comfortable with him for a reason I couldn't put my finger on. We get to his house, and it was just... Creepy. He was well off, and the house itself was gorgeous, spotless, and totally sterile. Nothing on the walls, every surface empty, no books, no CDs, nothing. I asked how long he'd lived there, and he said five years, while he was in the kitchen. He then asked me to go into his room grab something, keys I think, from the top drawer in his dresser. I got the coldest chill up my spine, and immediately stepped closer to the front door. There was no way I was letting him come between me and the exit. He asked me again to go to his room, and I laughed and said, No dude, I'm hungry, let's go. He asked one more time, visibly annoyed at this point, and I proceeded to pretend that I was a bitchy stupid girl, and made a fuss about being hungry and what the hell was taking him so long. He was pissed, so I walked out of his house down the sidewalk and made him follow me. We got to the car, and I kept pretending to be a bitchy clueless chick, and demanded he take me home. He did, in cold furious silence. Then, when he stopped the car in front of my place, he grabbed my face to kiss me goodbye. He bit my lip so hard I was bleeding, and he reached under my shirt and twisted my nipple. I luckily got him off me, falling out my door, and ran inside to the sound of him laughing. I ended up with a bruised face and nipple, cut lip, and was scared that he knew where I lived, but I still feel like I survived a legit serial killer. One time, it was about midnight, probably later, and I went into a supermarket with my boyfriend. It was a 24-hour supermarket, he went into the bathroom, and I decided I'd go too. So I walked down this corridor and turned right into the ladies. I was a bit drunk, so I spent a sec looking at my drunk self in the mirror before picking a cubicle. All the doors were weighted so they stayed shut, but as I was looking, I noticed under the reflection of one of the doors, I saw a pair of feet, male shoes, crossed at the ankle, as though sitting in a very relaxed position. They didn't move at all. I was overcome by fear, feeling that someone had been sitting there waiting for an unsuspecting woman to come in, and I said oh frick no out loud and literally ran out the door. Being in a bathroom at night and seeing a pair of relaxed opposite sex feet in one of the stalls as though they'd been chilling there all night strikes fear like I've never experienced. Hurricane Florence a year ago. We planned to ride it out as we were on a hill and in an area where the winds wouldn't be bad. Mostly ignored the news, too. The night before, I got this huge pit of fear in my stomach and begged my dad for us to go stay with my sister a few hours and land. He fought with me about it but I finally convinced him. We came back a week later to find a tree fallen into our house, a house full of water. A tornado formed in the woods behind the house and pushed the tree up a 45 degree slope into our roof and through our house. Now, I will always trust my gut feeling. No matter how stupid it seems. I live in Dallas, TX. About almost a month ago it was Sunday night and I was doing my typical Uber Eats drives around 9pm-ish. I noticed there's a thunderstorm warning right when I thought about stopping for the night but it cleared so I decided to try to stay out till 10. I needed to get cheese so I walk in Kruger that's where I was parked. As I'm walking in the door I hear the tornado sirens go off. Then my phone sounds off with the same watch alert. I run and get the cheese silly I know and hurried to head home so I can get safe. It clicked in my head that if the siren went off it was a big deal, and I was terrified. I was speeding home and it seemed that every time I passed a stoplight they were turning off behind me. I get closer to my apartment complex and it's all torn up, shattered windows, trees down everywhere, but it was so ironic because had I been home I would have been worse than when I was sitting in the Kroger parking lot. When I was hiking in the woods and I saw a baby bear, I slowly turned and walked quickly away from the bear, because I'm not getting eaten. I had to drag my friend along with me because he didn't understand why we needed to return the way we came from. While babysitting, I heard the sound of glass being scraped with something metal and immediately hid the children in a walk-in closet. I called the police and very nearly escaped being robbed or worse. Was riding my bike home from a friend's house when I was a young teen, over 20 years ago. We had both lost track of time so it was dusk when I left, lived about a mile away was traveling down one of the last roads to get home when I had this weird feeling, so I turned around to look back down the road, saw headlights pass, stop, back up and turn on the road I was on. It was a pretty long road without many houses and no street lights or anything. 
As soon as they turned I bolted into the woods and hid pretty far in. The car slowly drove by and kept going. No idea what they were doing but I didn't want anything to do with it. Was at a party at some friend's place in my early 20s when some random people show up. Our parties typically involved lots of booze and loud music. The strangers informed us they were having a party at their place across the street and invited everyone over. We said sure. Thanks for the invite. We go over and the floor is littered with used needles all over. Nope got out of there very quickly. I'll go back to just drinking. Thanks. I was in an Irish bar in Bangkok with my wife, and a group of five very muscular Asian guys came in and started to drag a white guy out. The bar owner stood up and yelled this does not happen here. And amazingly the five dudes listened and went outside to wait for this guy to leave. The owner asked the guy what's going on and he said these dudes were going to kill him. At this point the bar owner was trying to smooth things over and offered us some free beers, but I'm 99% sure this was actually an Irish mob owned bar and we were there at the wrong time. We were definitely in a hurry to leave. Long story short we left and never went back. A co-worker of mine went there later and told me the waitress urged him to leave because there was going to be a hit there that day. When I was dating my crazy ex, we got into a fight on the highway while I was driving. When things seemed to calm down I got out of the vehicle to breath and she drove off. As I was walking down the highway, at night, I could feel an immense fear building up. I grew up in the woods, walking around every night. But this was something I never experienced before. A few minutes later I saw something run across the road, so I started walking backwards. Immediately right after that, my ex came back to pick me up. As much as I hated to get into my car with her, there was no way I was staying on that highway. When I was a teenager my boyfriend and I had a spot to go park and mess around. Never had any issues until this one night when the closer we got to the spot the more sense of dread I felt. We got to the turn and he said he had a bad feeling. I told him I did too so we drove past and went elsewhere. The relief we both felt driving away was like a huge weight off our shoulders. I'm pretty sure someone was waiting in the trees with bad intentions. Another time after we were married we were going down a twisty road off deep in the woods. I was driving. He suddenly said he had a bad feeling and to just drive through and not stop for anything. He was really spooked. Seconds later on the tightest terpin curve a man ran out of the woods waving his arms. I flew right past him quick as possible. Pretty sure he was going to rob us. He was laying in wait for the few cars that used that road. Nephew and I were walking home from getting a pizza at night and he and I just looked at each other and said do you feel that in the exact tone and he and I both looked in the direction we felt it from and got spooked that we both had the same dreadful feeling and decided to run the rest of the way home. He and I have never felt such intense fear. I still think about it and have a feeling someone was watching us, probably looking for an easy target. Was having lunch in a restaurant with my mom and something just felt wrong. Told my mom we should hurry and get home and as soon as we reached the parking lot a car smashed into the window and crushed the booth we were sitting in. Still think about that a lot. I was throwing a football with a friend in my driveway when suddenly I got a terrible feeling in the pit of my stomach. I hear him say, did you just get a horrible feeling? We both felt it from the woods across the street. It felt like despair and fear. The closer we got, the worse it was. We noped out real quick. Later that night we both had nightmares of being kidnapped. Was driving westbound on a fairly empty road in a large city at night. Two tinted out muscle cars heading eastbound start exchanging GUN fire, probably semi-automatic. They pass an ambulance, sirens wailing, still shooting at each other. Then they pass me. The ambulance pulled over. I pulled into a convenience store parking lot, and after a few minutes realized that I might have been hit but adrenaline wouldn't tell me. I waited a moment, scared to look at my legs. Luckily I wasn't hit, and I think the ambulance came out okay too. Please subscribe if you liked the video, it really helps the channel to grow. See you again.